need to pull your but shirt. But why in are the you back why are you on the edge? And sit on your shirt. Oh, that's a good idea. Wow. Yeah. That's what that's a news. You don't but need no, to, no, yeah, no, don't, you don't do, need that. To do that. <laughs> Just sit on the back of it. So it pulls it down. Yes, but don't pull this part. Leave this part like tucked or something. Yeah. So, so we were talking about that dirty booty of yours and how you don't wipe frequently. <laughs> Oh, How's my hair look? Uh, it looks wonderful, marvelous. Craft services, hair and makeup. They went home for the, for the day. Thank you. Oh. Don't, not the hair. <laughs> All right, thank hey, you. Hey, what about me? Not with that same ass rag. <laughs> <laughs> this is what a little gay Italian boy from uh, Massachusetts looks like when he grows up. <laughs> um, I'm from Massachusetts. I'm a New Englander. And... Um, majored in accounting but that creative side always took control over my life and my family on my mom's side uh, lived down here in Florida so I came down to Florida at least once a year as a kid all, all over the state and I just knew that I wanted to be here. I ended up getting um, associated with what's called Winter Color Guard out there um, and uh, started dancing with these teams and it was just kind of a raw talent. I never really took any formal lessons um, until I got in this group. And um, we had a, a prima ballerina that was an instructor and so that's kind of like got my love for ballet and we started taking um, all the people in this group started taking ballet classes with the Boston Ballet. Mm -hmm. How old were you then? I was old actually. I was 20. Okay. Yeah, was, that's okay. old. Yeah, for yeah. That's for, old. For, for that. You know. So, so um, this is where all of the poses after an exercise yes, come from. This is where all of that comes from. He just hops out of each exercise and ends up in some. So Frank, you did mention earlier about how your mom um, would show love with food, mm -hmm. right? So I <clears throat> give me a little bit more information on that, and I kind of want to know if you could tell us and all the viewers. Um, how that has carried over to your relationship with nutrition today? Uh, Italian moms do it with food, you know. So uh, it and it carries, it carries throughout my life. I actually have done it too. I do it too. I, I it's it's um, just a way that they show love, and it's this it's this need that my mom carried through her. You know, she's still living. I talked to like yeah. she's not here. Um, <clears throat> you know, she but still she still carries it through. Yeah. Um, you know, so you know when we were when we were little and and uh, when we were younger, and she would come home. You know, my mom and dad worked. She would come home and sometimes couldn't cook dinner because they would come home after work and they would get takeout. And it was, you know, maybe McDonald's, maybe Burger King. And it wasn't just that cheeseburger and fries. It was, you know, three cheeseburgers, two chicken sandwiches, you know, four fries. And it was just me and my sister. So. <laughs> but, 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 but that bag was empty. So, um, you know, and that, it does stick with you. It does, it's, it's what I knew. My grandpa grandparents did it as well. Um, and on both sides, my, my mom's and my dad's side, my grandparents had restaurants. Mm, so, yeah, so I grew up with food, lots of food, holidays. You know, we have got a banquet of food, and to this day, we still do. And I'm, I'm always like, Ma, don't make all of that. We're going to take care of this. Just bring this and this. Okay, well, she brought this, this, and the rolls, and the lasagna. We're going to do a pre, we're going to do a pre little eat here with lasagna. Then we're going to get to the turkey and the stuffing and the mashed potatoes and the carrots and everything else. So um, it's, a, it's probably the hardest uh, piece of my journey to handle. And uh, I, I grasp. Uh, I still grapple with it every single day, really. Um, Which part do you grapple with? The in the intake. The and, amount. Yeah, the amount. Um, because you're so used to having those massive meals yep. that being able to dial that down, sometimes you struggle with, okay, I don't need two scoops of this. I'm okay with just one. Yeah, and um, as I'm getting more fit, I'm feeling that more. So if I overeat... I'm getting sick, you know what I mean, and 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 I can tell it. I can I can I can feel it now, and I can sense it, and I'm like, uh, that I gotta stop. Mm -hmm. um, I actually had a moment in Easter, uh, a couple of months ago at Easter, where um, I was just eating so clean, 
for the longest time. And then we had Easter dinner at a friend's house. And it wasn't like, it wasn't bad food, but I indulged. Mm -hmm. um, and I was at the um, table and we had just cleared the plate and I turned to Marty, my partner, and I said, I think we have to go. Like, I almost thought I had to go to the hospital because my whole stomach cramped. And I was like, I've never felt this before. I don't know what's happening. Do I have, you know, <laughs> my gallbladder or my <laughs> pancreas or something is like yeah, gonna, you know, gonna I, I was like, what's going on? Yeah. Um, I, I, I was cramping so hard. I was like, I, we gotta go. We gotta get, we gotta get back to the house. Interesting. Yeah. yeah, and so my body is telling me now <clears throat> when to stop. Um, and I'm doing a, a lot more with nutrition yep. in regards. And I will say, you. This year has been a big year for you too. You're down over 20 pounds. Yep. And you. Who knew? <laughs> who knew? Well, what, Carried it so all well. That sexiness. <laughs> <laughs> that firmness in your breast. Yes, that perky bosom <laughs> that just always gave you a little peek out the shirts Whoa. at work. <laughs> Shirts have become a little tighter. And they smaller. have. And <laughs> smaller. Mm -hmm. So. The shorts, too, have become smaller. What has been working well for you? Five inches. What, what has been working well for you, uh, especially this year? <clears throat> Commitment. Okay. Commitment um, and control. So uh, my biggest excuse was my schedule. Mm -hmm. And so when you prioritize your fitness journey in your schedule, then that kind of takes over the, I gotta go to Walgreens, or I gotta go shopping, or I gotta go here, or I gotta go home. So um, I think the control that I took over my, my own personal schedule um, and work schedule and excuse schedule, if you will, mm -hmm. making excuses, um, coupled with commitment, I have made a commitment to myself that I wasn't going to, um, you know, miss um, a, 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 a session. Maybe you made a commitment um, to us too. That's right. You signed an agreement. <laughs> I did sign an agreement. But you no, know, but kids, you know what agreements can be broken. No, but it's interesting that you say that your schedule before was that thing that kind of kept you from staying consistent and that was like your crutch, right? Yeah. Well, let's call yeah. it a crutch. Yeah. Um, but that's for a lot of people. A lot of people is like, oh, work is busy, this is busy, I got this, I got that, I got this. But just like you said, like it's being able to work mm -hmm. it into your schedule if it is important. Because well, it's not a matter of finding the time, right? Because we have the yeah. time, it's more about mm -hmm. making it. It's always, making it. And this year. Too. Well, my schedule is the same. Yeah. Yep. You're my still schedule busy. is the same the same. You're still busy. I just haven't missed a workout. If anything, I would also say, like ever since you've been going through this renovation with the house and the yeah. selling the house, like you've been You've still been consistent. Yeah. This is you've consistent. Still been you, this consistent. is the most consistent you've been since we've been together. And there are a lot of things that played a part and, and obviously there's a lot of internal commitments that you've made. There's commitments you made to us. There's commitments you made to schedule. Like mm -hmm. you have a schedule. You're here at this day, this time, every single week. And you know that. And that's in you know, and I think that helps too, right? Like yep. I, I think sometimes it's a, when Oh, I'm sorry. Sometimes when people kind of just randomly like do it every now and then or it's never set yeah. in stone, just like work. You know, if planned have, out uh, too. Mm -hmm. planned yeah, out, planned out, yep. And I think it's a true testament to you too, Frank, because your schedule is just as hectic, but now your health and fitness is just as much of a priority as work is or And what's happened is it's flipped. So what's happened is now I can't not work out. Mm -hmm. I can not do something at my house, <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. you know, um, you know, yeah, so it's flipped. Like I even text them a couple of days ago and I was like, hey, I got to change some times here. I didn't hear from them because they were busy. I think they may have been sleeping. And I was like, I'm going to let this go tonight. But if I don't hear from them tomorrow, I'm going to eat. I'm going to text them again. And I did. And I was like, well, what's up with you people? Don't you like me anymore? No, let's How see what you really said. Let's yeah, what'd you say? <laughs> Bitches, why the hell haven't y'all back to me? <laughs> I was like, I am not going to not work out till next Tuesday. I have to work out. <laughs> like, find a way to fit me in. And, uh, then, and then something happened because Frank has his, again, 
like you said, it's very important to make sure, like, instead of like, oh, maybe I'll work out tomorrow, maybe I'll work out this day, maybe uh-huh. I'll punch it in, Frank has his schedule. And that Thursday time that he normally <laughs> comes, for some reason, isn't on there and somebody took it. What the fuck happened? Who is in my time, bitches? I did. Y'all need to put said, me back in my time. Who do I need to cut? Who, who's in my time? Who is in this? Now, I will say this, too, and this is where, like, the brain turns for me. I was pre-thinking, I was planning what was going to happen if I could not work out today. Mm-hmm. So I did have a plan. I had a plan B, and my plan B was I was going to the gym tomorrow morning at 8, mm-hmm. and I started writing out a program. Wow, look at you. That's not That's me crazy. at all. Yes. <laughs> but I did start to write something last night when I didn't hear from them. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm going to have to go to Crunch. Yeah. I'm going to have to go. Because <laughs> I got to get work Because I, I did start that. And well, that's, that's kind of where I'm awesome. like, see, yeah, like you're like, you're, mm-hmm. you're like, oh, and those little moments are like, oh, wait, things are really like turning. I mm-hmm. can't do without this now, mm-hmm. you know? It's like an identity <clears throat> shift a little bit. Like this is just a part of me. And when I'm not doing it, and this is how I feel too, when I'm not doing it, it feels like something's off, like I'm something's a fraud. Missing. Yeah. You know, like I'm not who I'm supposed to be. Which is very interesting um, because it can it takes a long time for people to shift that way of thinking. What yeah. advice would you give to someone that says, "Oh, I can't work out. I don't have time." Um, what I would say is, you you've got to sit down and talk to yourself. You got to sit down. You got to open up a book. You got a journal, and you have to talk to yourself and figure out what is stopping you. So, what are your obstacles? What are the what are your excuses? And that's what I did. I kind of I I did write down why I wasn't coming, and those things were like I was tired. Um, I purposely didn't pack my bag in my car. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, okay. This is okay. Real so yeah, you know what going. I mean? Like you know, I was like, oh, I don't have anything in my car. You know, um, and I actually. Th- didn't do that on purpose, but I felt like I, I did. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and so uh, I did write down, I got to a point where I was like, I, I got to shit or get off the pot. And what is stopping me? So I would tell you, find out what's stopping you. And then if you have somebody like you guys, if you have trainers or if you've had ID'd somebody or you have a relationship, then sit down and talk to them and say, you know, I'm making every excuse in the book and and figure out when, you know, you can come in. And, you know, these snuggle sessions Mm -hmm. are great for that, too. Um, Find out what your excuses are. And snuggle sessions are are accountability, goal setting sessions. Yeah, um, case. But have a point. session <laughs> with whoever that person is, you know, or even if it's if you have a friend that's trying to connect you to the gym, figure out, you know, what your excuses are. I think people go into this not understanding what their excuses are. That's great. Yeah. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. I think they, they say, I can't, I, I just can't do this, I'm busy, but they don't understand that that's their crutch. They don't mm-hmm. understand that there's a bazillion things that they're saying they can't do. Um, and it seems like and sometimes people wait, like they wait for something to change, uh, as in their schedule, as <clears throat> in once I get this done, once I do this, yeah. and you know, like sometimes that never changes, like you never stop being busy. Mm-hmm. Um, That's and, true. And it's, it's just like now, yeah, it's you, either you now don't. or never, you know, like, and um, it's so true. You have to have that self-awareness to call yourself out. You got to call yourself out at some point and, and say either this is road A, this mm-hmm. is road B. Road A has suffering because I'm going to exercise and it's going to be tough. It's going to be tired. I'm mm-hmm. going to do things that's not going to be fun. Right. Or road B, I'm not going to do anything and I'm going to wait until, it, until I need to do it, until I have to pay medical bills, until I can't, right. until I need help. Until you're at your point, yeah. you know, whatever that is. And, and you're, when you hit that point, though, I feel like, I feel like at, at, on one side it's easier to get started, but I also feel like your, um, your, your mental capacity isn't able to mm-hmm. start. Do you know what I mean? So um, I'd also say... If see if the person or the, the gym or the trainer is able to let you just come in and watch. 
Yeah. Yeah. That's do not you, a bad idea. Do you know what I mean? Like, because mm-hmm. again, that fear was who's in the gym, who's looking at me, what am I going to do? What's the environment? Is it an open gym? You know what I mean? Kind yeah. of a thing. And so, um, you know, come in and just watch a class. You mm-hmm. can stay for you know 15 minutes. Watch the, watch the class. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, um, but for me it was what are the excuses? Because the excuses stopped everything. I love it. Mm-hmm. So Frank, you've lost over 20 pounds. I have. Yes, you have. Um, and you have become a lot better with your food choices and awareness with food. Uh, <coughs> what advice would you give to a person that is struggling with over consuming? Um, you know, in, in a sitting or having massive meals and like not really having control mm. over how much they're eating. So what would you tell that person? Since this is something that you've also struggled with and overcome, mm. overcoming as well, right? Cause it, mm-hmm. it's- Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, yeah. I, you, deal, you just deal with it. It's, it's, it's um, you know, I, I still say I don't have a good relationship with food. You know what I mean? But- um, It's better. But I'm in control. Mm-hmm. They're in control. Um, what I would say, so this one's a little hard because I feel like when you're there, when you're at that point, um, uh, I feel like that um, habit, if you will, mm-hmm. is associated with your psyche. And I feel like it's a, it could be, um, you know, for me, it was what I grew up with, one, um, Two, I thought I was hungry, yeah. you know, um, and um, three, I kept telling myself, oh, I'm going to eat better the week, uh, next week. <laughs> Monday. Yeah. Yep. Monday, I'm going to start to eat right or I'm going to start my diet or I'm going to start counting calories or whatever that may be for you. I will say the one thing that always sticks in my mind is you guys saying if you think you're hungry wait 30 minutes, mm-hmm. have a glass of water. Um, that helped me a lot to get through my mental uh, capacity. It. Yeah, mm-hmm. because mine was associated with, um, like I said, just wanting to eat and thinking that when I went to order something, I had to order the meatloaf with the mashed potatoes and the rice and get the key lime pie and the ranch dressing, you know, on the salad, where um, I changed a little bit of my palate as I went through this and figured out what creates that fullness for me with better foods. So I would just say the hardest, this is so hard to do, but you're gonna have to train your brain to, to stop and question. Yeah. And I think, you have to, I think you have to train your brain to say, I don't need this, I think I do, um, so let me go here instead and see what happens. And I think, again, like the hardest thing to do to get started in the gym is to show up. I think the hardest thing to do to change that is to actually change it and yeah. try For it. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Try the dressing with the, with the Italian dressing instead of the ranch. Um, you know, you don't have to get the rice and the potato, maybe put the broccoli on the plate. Right. Mm-hmm. And it's so, all like, you know, substitution. Yeah, yeah, try that. And it doesn't, you don't have to cut it out. Like right. you don't have to cut your meal in half, but just try those substitutions and you'll start to, your body starts to train your, your mind. And your palate, right? Just and like your you palate, said. yeah, and, and your palate. All, it's all trial and error. Yeah. Like I, I tell people all the time, like, your body is one big science experiment, yeah. right? When it comes to physical movement, the science behind mobility, strength, nutrition, it's one big science experiment. And we keep trying and trying and trying to see what fits and works for your body. Yeah. So mm-hmm. I think that's great. So. Yeah, it's, and the, the, the greatest thing is once you get to the, your, your, your point, once you get to your, your, your fit point, you know, Fit point? Fit, fit print. print. Your fit print. Yeah, once you get to that point where your fit print is is gelling. Uh-huh. And gelling. Is oh gelling God, and, and you're and you're you know, you're I get there. All hot and bothered when you're you're, you're getting excited about your workouts, you're eating right. You don't have to deprive yourself the rice. Like I'm still eating rice. Yep. Yep. I'm still having piece of key lime pie. This is Memorial Day weekend. We're coming up to. I'm gonna have a drink. I'm gonna have a piece of apple pie. I'm you know and I'm noticing that my body's processing it differently. So again, part of the journey, part of the understanding, part of the education. 
So let's keep it real now, right? The viewers want to know the real. You've lost weight before. I have. And you put it back on. I have. <laughs> and then you lost weight again. Uh -huh. What? It's a journey, isn't it? It is a journey. A hundred percent. It's a journey. Yep. And it's, it's, it's your journey. And it's okay because we learn from And most things. of the world is Most of the world with deals with the same cycle. thing, uh -huh. right? Um, but with the process and the mm -hmm. journey that you've been through, and I think it, it's a great opportunity for us to learn from our failures and our mistakes and be able to grow from them to make sure that we don't do the same thing the next time. Mm -hmm. um, what would you tell yourself now that you are at this point? I think we probably surpassed where you were before maybe, right? Yeah, and yeah. It's, it's, you've been here for a while. Too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, what would you have done differently the last time when you put the weight back on to make sure that it doesn't happen again? Um, well, I know, take, it's, take, it's, it's yeah, a deep question. Yeah, yeah. Deep question. Take control of my schedule, for one. Yep. Take control of that and, and cut the excuses out. Um, and also, uh, the other side of that is being gentle with yourself. So, um, my, I, I feel like the, the number plays, in, plays mm -hmm. a head game with a lot of us. So um, I needed to adjust and understand that I need to listen more to my body and not so much look at the scale. <clears throat> so I probably would have been a, a lot more gentle with myself and not beat myself up about my failures um, or my setbacks, if you will, with you know food or not coming to the gym or not staying on a on a steady training schedule. So, um, and I probably would have had a lot more conversations with you guys about it. Yeah. So I, I probably transparent. yeah I would have I would have put it out there and I would have said hey I'm having a hard time um, you know help me get motivated to, <laughs> to, to do this yeah um, you know because we set a number right of what I wanted to be at yeah but I don't think I'm ever going to be at that number mm -hmm. because we're building muscle mm -hmm. so but is that starting to is that okay? Like, have yes, it's okay that? now. I have, I, I have, I've, I've accepted it, and I've accepted Christ in my soul. <laughs> you have accepted the unicorn. I have accepted the unicorn okay. and ninja blessing. Um, and um, well, it seems like you're, you're understanding your body more. You're I'm understanding, understanding my body more. And you're I'm understanding learning. the process of it. And I'm understanding that my closet fits. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so I'm really relying on how do I feel more than um, you know what's on the scale and the scale can be a straight mind fuck absolutely it can be a straight mind well fuck. it is mm -hmm. to, it, it, every day it is and, and, and um, I'm not it's it's not a bad thing to hop on the scale and check kind of where where your weight is but to be able to have that understanding and know like this is only half of the picture right right exactly. because this isn't telling me biologically what's happening with my water intake what's happening happening with my pounds of muscle what's happening with my pounds of fat yeah. so I think it's awesome that you have been able to create that relationship with the scale and be more forgiving of yourself and understand like ah, you know what I might be up a pound because I probably put on a pound of muscle yeah. or I might be up because you know I, I drank a whole lot of water this today or this past week mm -hmm. yeah. so I and you understand that the weight is gonna go up and it's gonna come down you know, I think we had conversations where it's like, oh, I had a girl, I had a lot of drinks this weekend, yeah. but I know it's going to drop down right when I get back on my routine. And it did. It's understanding that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, it's having the knowledge and having the self-awareness with all of your choices and what those choices create. Yeah. And so, sometimes people are so um, delusional, I guess, sometimes, which is really interesting and, and, and it sucks sometimes. It's the standard. It's like, yeah. It's like the standard, like your weight. Mm -hmm. I mean, even at, you know, even at Walt Disney World where, uh, you know, they give us credits for making our BMI. I'm, I don't make my BMI, mm -hmm. but I'm the healthiest I've ever been in my life, yep. you know? Um, I don't so, make my BMI either. No, I'm, I know. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, so your fail forward <coughs> would be making sure your schedule, or control you, you over have your more schedule. control over yep. your schedule. Um, also being more forgiving to yourself, being with yourself and yeah. allowing yourself to fuck up sometimes and just know like yeah. this fuck up is not permanent, mm -hmm. right? right. Um, and being transparent and open, I'd have more conversations with you guys. Yeah. yeah. 
trusting trusting in your accountability having somebody on your team yeah whether that be investing into a, a coach or yeah a create your 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 tribe mm -hmm. you know and keep it strong keep Love that it. shit strong did i get a prize yeah, yeah. You, you, you. high five <laughs> 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 Yes, and we is, took some of your beef jerky. Thank you. Is there craft that services? Gift for us. May, <laughs> oh, you see makeup, makeup, makeup came through earlier, just for you. Uh, what do you want? They didn't even wow, come for me. I'm honored. <laughs> well, folks, that's it. That is all. <laughs> that's it. That's all she wrote.